their first trip against that Houston defense, and the Aggies have to be prepared for it. Both teams in that defensive tip to start with, the respect that they have for one another. Francis wins the tip. Houston with the ball, and this is LJ Pryor. Houston making the move to the Big 12 Conference. Pryor's a guy that knows all about it. The transfer from Baylor. Knocked out of bounds. Good work there by Levesque. You have to know if you're Houston, AM is going to down you on the side. They force you to the short corner. And the defensive help swarms the ball. And if you continue to try to make those plays, you will get eaten up for the next two hours. Looking to feed it inside, and it's a turnover. Uh, Buzz Williams guys in guard as well. They're built a little bit differently. They funnel the ball to different places. Houston's more of a square you up. But this kid, Wade Taylor now, there's no back down in four in maroon. Kid from Dallas, take a look at the starting five of Carter, Hefner, Taylor, Levesque, and Coleman, the old Duke transfer. And for Houston, we mentioned Shed and Cryer, Sharp, Roberts, Francis, the rest of the starters for Kelvin Sampson's team, they are a perfect 10 and 0. Every foot on the floor is contested by Houston. They give you nothing. You've got to screen with force, you've got to be physical, you've got to move the ball. Carter's jumper off the mark, rebound, shed, and here come the Cougars. Dreyer. Shot not able to hit, and a rebound there from Coleman. Aggies are built to hold their own on the glass. And that's one of their strengths the Aggies have, especially on the offensive end. 45% of their misses, the Aggies run down. Taylor inside off the glass and good. And a and m First points of the game. He's good in the pipe and he's exceptional with his right hand in the pipe is Wade Taylor. Sharp spins it back out. That one knocked away. Loose ball. And still a fight for it. And Houston comes away with a great hustle by Roberts. Pryor gets his miss. And he'll set it back up. Francis double team kick out shed and they skip it sharp can't hit and it's tracked down by Levesque that's a staple of Texas A&M defense boot they double team they monster that low block more times than not you've got to reverse it and find that backside bomb they got the look just didn't get it to go Hefner able to drill a three and Hefner 40 percent from three so far this year his, brain, his game has grown as his body has grown. He was a skinny kid coming in, has put on weight and size, much more than just a shooter now. He's got a complete game. Shed live. Pass is deflected. Hector. Carter. And tangled up underneath. Wade Taylor is the SEC preseason player of the year, and he is so good at those rip drives from up top. And if you lose your balance and lunge a little bit, it sets this kid up to get strong to that right paw. A really good physical start by Buzz's guys. Yeah, Buzz Williams fifth year at Texas A&M. Of course, had the success at Marquette, Virginia Tech. Rebound inside, that one stripped away. Coleman had it blocked with his foul. And boy, you could tell this is going to be physical. Meanwhile, for Kelvin Sampson, 10th year as the head man at Houston. And this program has turned into one of the elite in all of college basketball. They play the game, Houston does, with massive, massive effort. Their defense is confrontational. And if you're not built... To go up against it, you will shrink from the moment. And so far, the Aggies have thrown as many blows as the Houston Cougars have. <laughs> Aggies with the early lead. <laughs> JoJo Tugler <laughs> checking in. 
The offensive glass is the oxygen boot for Texas A&M. 45% is a huge number. And as good as Houston is keeping you off the glass, they're going to have to double down today against the Aggies. Switching matchup zone. It goes straight man in a short clock. And had it blocked by Hefner. Toss up ahead, fight for that loose ball, and they get the foul on Sharp. And what is Texas A&M doing? They are ripping that ball defensively and sprinting up the floor. You've got to score in other ways besides against the half-court defense. I talked about Hefner's growth. Not only physically, but in his game, he was not able or capable of making defensive plays like that his first year in College Station. And Garcia getting out in front, putting rim pressure on Houston in conversion offense. Toss at the rim, loose ball. Coleman stumbled for a second. And now Taylor, as the Aggies will set it up. And end the early touchdown and leading 7 0. Garcia couldn't hit that one. Shed comes away with it. Shed speeding up ahead. Up the glass and good. And Houston on the board. He got it there with, I think it was it was ticking to 27 on the shot clock. Man, the speed and the force that Shed brings it with. AC, AAC defensive player of the year, and he'll be right there with the best of them in the Big 12 this year. See those hands. Garcia at the basket. And he gets back. Back to the other end and shed. Uh, this is a guy that there's not a better on ball defender in college basketball than Jamal Shed. And he has not a good, he has a great dad in terms of the only thing his dad has ever said to Kelvin Sampson is coach my kid hard. And Shed plays the game with a maturity. His voice yesterday in practice just popped off the first five minutes we were in there. He is the real deal. And it'd be a tough conversation with me if you said, I have a better on-ball defender in college ball. Prove it to me, because I think this guy's the best. Jose Garcia here, the transfer from Mississippi State. Knocks that one down, and Texas A&M leading at 8-2. Garcia changes the game as a rebounder, as well as anyone that we have in college basketball. Hits. Their defense is built to give you that shot. If you're going to take it, you got to make it because that, that short corner runner is going to be available. Ball it feeds Carter. Carter gets inside, had it knocked away, and it's off the leg of Chase Carter. It'll be. Houston basketball when we return. Aggies with the early lead A4. SEC, ACC challenge, all those big games have taken place. We have a pretty good feel for who's who. Man, the Big 12 looking good with four inside the top 12 right now. And a swing and a miss by Indiana on the home floor today, a game that they had to have. John Shelby, Jimmy Dykes here in Houston. And from Toyota Center. Shed gives off Cryer. A repeatable clean stroke by LJ Cryer. Is a violent, violent cut to the ball by Cryer as a shooter. Cryer from nearby Katie to transfer from Baylor. And he can fill it up. After looking for some help. And he traveled. Cryer all over him. Well, L.J. Cryer, 40% three-point shooter for his career, and that was a violent sprint with purpose. And this kid is classic hard to guard. He's wired to score. He's his fifth all-time leading scorer in the state of Texas in high school. Houston throws strikes. They're a very good passing team, which sets up a shooter with a simple, repeatable shot, and that is L.J. Cryer and why he is hard to guard. Dead looking right here. Pryor used the ball fake and now done. Right side of Shed. 
Loose ball, offensive rebound. Houston doesn't come up with it, and the defensive rebound from Garcia. Aggies with the ball and a one-point advantage. Look, this game is going to be determined by on the rise of the shot, not when the shot's released. On the rise of the shot, who's going to own the glass on both ends? Masaki, that one is knocked out of bounds. Stays with the Aggies. Well, Masaki's a downhill driving dude, man. He's left-handed. Houston's going to sit on that left hand and make him do something to his right today two very prepared well scouted teams taking away your strength at every opportunity a basket 21 in that game against memphis has been a little bit lately that's a turnover and it's houston ball so it'll be Houston ball. Yeah, this is a step up for Jace Carter transferring out of the Missouri Valley Conference. This is a different animal that he's up against today. He's not, he's not fast and determined in his cut to get open. Turnover results. Breyer gets into the paint, flips it up, a little too strong. Rebound Carter. Game rebounding right by the guys in the room. Ball knocked away. And the Aggies come up with it. Oh, look at Shed. The same gets it to Dunn. Back to Cryer. And a foul as Cryer hit the deck. You may have thought someone was going to end up in our lap on the sideline. Coming up tomorrow on ESPN, Ronnie James at USC play their first game of a four-game road trip to end the year against Bruce Pearl's Auburn Tigers. Coverage begins 1 Eastern at 10 a.m. Pacific. Well, I saw Auburn last week just put a knot on the head of Indiana, 30-point blowout there in Atlanta. They're a top 25 team, not ranking the top 25. Great to see Bronny James work his way back onto the floor after the, the heart problem in the offseason. The infield continues to draw talent out there to USC. He's got good success out there. I asked LJ Cryer yesterday, what's the difference? He said the accountability that I'm held to defensively, I didn't even know it existed at that level. And it has thrown my game as an offensive player to understand what good defense looks like. He is a perfect fit. He reached out. His dad actually reached out to Kelvin Sampson once he went in the portal. They had a relationship from the high school Recruitment that went on between Houston and Pryor, but big time pickup. That's the key with Sharp on him. Double team comes. And they get the foul on Shed. All right, LJ Cryer, who is now with the Cougars and a guy from Katy, Texas. He finished his high school career with the fifth most points in te Texas public school history, most in the Houston area ever. Well, he had 30 versus Creighton last year in that NCAA tournament for Baylor before he went into the portal. He takes 14 shots a game. He's got a nice balance between the threes and the twos. And it is a war, an absolute war on the glass in this game, and it's going to stay that way for the next hour and 40 minutes. Maybe it's done here. Done with Hefner on him. Cougars move the ball. This is Shed. Gets into the paint, kicks out sharp, got a three. It's a, I'll tell you what, if you win the elbow, which Houston did on the far side, they won the elbow, got the defense to respect the elbow touch. And Sharp, who's a twister on his three-point shot, he really twists his upper body, which I don't like, but he gets one to go. Turnover, and it's Houston basketball. Rattled for the first time was Texas A&M. Houston, they suffocate you. They take away your oxygen. more than Houston. It's not convenient switches. They're, they switch with a purpose. They talk loud, early, and constant. Sharp lost his footing. 
And a foul the floor. When we continue, we'll talk defense. It's a priority. So far this year against the Cougs. It takes massive effort to play like they did on that one possession. And that was late in the game against Xavier. It's relentless. They never go away from it throughout a ball game. Well, Tarsino here. Takes off the prior. Houston by a couple. Double team pops out. Washington. Prior able to get it off. Shot clock winding down. Dunn, Euro step. Feed inside. Roberts the deuce. A really good find though. Again, anytime the ball is driven through the elbow, I'm telling you, good things happen for your offense. The Aggies giving a little bit of dose as well in that hard hedge ball screen coverage. Washington was a turnover. That's not what he's in the game to do. You take long one side jump shots against Houston, they will run it right up your backside. And an offensive foul call. And dude, that's the frustration that Houston puts on you. You're just fighting for your life to set a screen and get the ball turned down the corner. And Taylor comes up with it. And you've got to make sure that thing's set by Wilden's Lefebvre. Taylor should have probably bounced it one more time as a set-up dribble before he turns the corner. And now he sets with a foul. Cougars leading it by six. Arsenal with Hepner on him. Sharp straight on. The rebound pulled down by Coleman. And where's the offense come from for the Aggies right now with Wade Taylor not on the floor? Not a lot of shot makers, downhill drivers, and get to the foul line is what this roster right now is built to do. Houston bench wanted to travel after, and he draws the foul. A big time play by Hefner just to recover the ball. Because he was absolutely getting chewed up by the pressure and to hang in the fight and come up with it. Again, he's 25 pounds heavier than he was when he got to College Station. He would have been just completely knocked out of the play a couple of years ago. Hayden Hefner, first free throw, in and out. Who gets a well officiated game right now? I don't think either coach has a problem with how it's being called. They're calling the right calls with the right official. It's not a heavy whistle, it's a high contact game. And that's something you tell your team they probably already have in that first or second media timeout. Hey, just play. They're letting us play. And that's, there's no advantage to either team in that situation. Both built for a fist fight. These are two teams, though, that are going to make the officials Doug Sermon, Spartan Lennox, Byron Jarrett. Make them make decisions, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's what aggressive teams do. He's got to move Texas A&M to see are they end up in their zone or their man. A lot of times that initial show it looks the same. Shot clock winding down. Shit, got to get it off. Bruce Paul. Fight for the rebound. Two possession arrow, and it belongs to the Aggies. But did that make sense what I said earlier? It, 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 rebounding in this game, it's on the rise of the shot. You can't wait till the ball's released. You're going to be playing catch up on the glass if you do. On the rise of the shot, are you pounding someone, body first, ball second? If not, you're going to get left out. And the Aggies doing a great job already, up 12 5 on the board. And one of the things they do so well is the offensive glass. Keeps them in game. Think about it. They're a top 10. The Aggies are offensive efficiency team, and they don't really shoot the ball straight. They drive it, they get fouled, and they climb on that offensive block. Carter looking for some help. The bounds. It'll be Aggies basketball. 
Texas A&M has turned it over six of their last ten possessions. Tough spot to get it in. Good hands there by Arsenal deflecting it. Garcia retrieves and Taylor will set it up. Clock winding down. Taylor off balance and it'll go. Yeah, we know what the hand wave is. Houston probably picked it up as well. It's late clock. And that ball screen came as a salute and slip and just got Wade Taylor going down the left side. Fryer a little strong, flying in to the board is sharp. And they get a foul. He's not in love with a shot by Fryer. Here's what Taylor's doing. That's a salute and slip. There's no ball screen being set by Carter. And Taylor with really good timing to cross over. And what is an unbelievably good on-ball defender. Good on good. Goes the Aggies with. Roberts picks opposite. Shed into the paint. Nifty move. He is so good and plays the game so low on both ends. Arsenault comes up limping. Comes immediately out of the game, but it's so hard to stay in front of all the guards in this game. Arsino in some pain. Side, and that one deflected by the Cougars out of bounds. It stays with AM. 18 13 here with 8 19 to go in the first half. John Chompy, Jimmy Dykes from Toyota Center. The Halal guys showcase. to the offensive blocks. Hefner will try a three. Got it. Big answer for Hayden Hefner and the Aggies. And the deficit is four. They've got to make their fair share. The Aggies do. They come in making seven a game, but only 28%. Hefner the main threat. Jackson State, that's a career high for him. This game has grown sharp getting to the free throw line. Already 36 attempts this year. He only had 40 all of last year. Much more aggressive. Coleman inside. No call. Aggressive move. And now Shed and the Cougars. Oh, great look inside. Tugler off the feed from Jamal Shed. The Houston Bigs. It's the first big out, and he has the right to run to the rim. Anyway, but Houston now on a 24-9 run, and they have started to heat up on the offensive end. And the overall team speed by Houston is its advantage for the team in white. Result in a 10-0 fast break points advantage. Wade Taylor has to check back in with two fouls because they need his offense. He's got to finish the half without picking up another one. Houston's offense over the years under Kobe Sampson, all the way back to his days at Oklahoma, Indiana, Montana Tech. It's just simple stuff. Now he's got a little more lipstick, a little more lipstick on the pig right now to dress it up some, but it's simple. Beat your guy, keep the ball moving, have good spacing. When we take a shot, we go on the glass type stuff. Looks up for Pryor as the bigger Washington on him. Shot clock under 10. And this is Roberts. And a good 
speed as he finds Tucker. And a good job by Tucker knowing if I get to the front of the rim, I'm going to be found with an interior pass. That's just simple, clean, tough, rugged basketball on the offensive end for Houston. Tucker's back has been barking for Roberts. It's been in me. Both guys playing and on the court right now. Aggies continue to be pushed out so high on their offense. Taylor inside and it bounces out, but he'll go to the line. That was going to be called. Six free throw attempts a game last year for Wade Taylor. He's at about the same rate right now, five and a half a game. But man, he's got deep three point ability. He's got a lot to manage this year, Boo. You go from a guy last year who was just a guy, he was just James was a Jack, just a guy, to the MIG, the most important guy. And the SEC player of the year expectations, the noise that surrounds kids these days, and he's handled it really well, but it's a lot on Wade Taylor's plate in the month of December. Taylor knocks it down. How about this college basketball triple header coming at you Wednesday night on ESPN. Number six, Baylor. Number 21, Duke at Madison Square Garden. Coverage steps off at seven, and then it's North Carolina. And number 11, Oklahoma in Charlotte. It's the second annual Jumpman Invitational Cap tonight with number one, Arizona, hosting Alabama and Jerry Colangelo's Hall of Fame series in Phoenix. I don't think we have a clear cut best team in college basketball right now. Arizona looks the part, I agree. They can really score. Alabama's defense has been giving up 90 points a game to power conference teams. That will not work against Arizona in that ballgame. Well, you said earlier UConn is a team that you still are a buyer on. I, I, I would buy them above anyone else right now because the level they're playing at still has a whole other level to go to. Donovan Klingon looked like the All-American last night in that game at Gonzaga. You hold Gonzaga to 63 points in their home state. You've done something defensive. Jed, feed in Roberts. Score the goal. Washington spiked that out of bounds. And he almost hit his head on the rim. It doesn't count, but spectacular. I mean, you're right. I mean, he, he has to duck to keep from hitting his head on the rim. Right there. Wow, that's... Big time SEC athlete around the rim. You gave me 15 tries with a trampoline. I don't <laughs> think I could do that. If, if, if he just majors in the majors, he's really good. Solomon Washington. Taylor blows by Shen and gets the deuce. And you don't take away his right hand. It's, he's going to get to the rim on you. Uncharacteristic of Houston's defense to not lock in and force him weak. will try one of the foul call didn't get it eight point advantage for Houston Cooper, that's not the shot that Kelvin Sampson won he is not a one pass first side of floor fire up a contested three guy never has been never will Houston and it'll be a one-and-one -one situation get shed on that one Anytime you get that ball if you're at the Aggies today outside of your shoulders or outside of your body space Those hands those Jordan swipes is what coaches call them. They are always in place Boo Houston defensively you don't get back cuts on them because they play below the ball on the wing so you're earning everything. You're always running away from the basket on your catches, which is another key part of their defense. Eli Lawrence. Aggies led the nation last year. Free throws made per game at almost 19. They're not there this year, only making 13. They also led in free throw attempts at 25. That number's down to 18 right now. But it tells you they are a downhill driving team. Rebound pulled down by Damian Dunn to Temple transfer. And 
Cook trying to break the pressure. Cooks leading by seven, pulls in on four to go in the first half. John looking for space, and a foul is called. They get Coleman on that one. Are under four timeout, 28-21, Houston leading Texas A&M. Not decide to be resolute in how you play the game one hour before tip. And Houston defines stifling defense and resolute as much as anyone in college basketball. But it resonates daily, deep, deep down in their soul. They know who they are, collectively and individually. It's a no-nonsense guy, Kelvin Sampson, who can coach his team. That's a short list. There's a short list of guys that can truly coach their team. Kelvin is on that list. Yeah. In and out, loose ball. Knocked away from Francis. And he gets fouled. Gun to inbound. And a steal. Taylor. Three. And now it's Cryer up ahead. Robert Speed inside. Francis had it knocked away. Loose ball to the floor. And eventually it ends up with Sharp at the basket. Pryor out of bounds. And a turnover. Aggie basketball. Well, that was not a big of beauty. It was not. But I'm going to tell you, that's a very well officiated possession. There's a lot of stuff going on, but nothing that influenced who came up with the ball and who didn't. It was a play on mentality. And Doug Sermons and... Bart Lennox, Byron Jarrett, they will be tested in this game, but I don't think either coach right now has a huge complaint for the whistle in this game. It all starts with four offensively for the Aggies. Taylor with eight points in the first half, and a turnover is Hector Watts. I, I find it hard to believe that the play call was for Hefner to go isolation. I know he's gotten stronger and bigger, but that's not going to work against Houston, who is way more physical at that three spot than what Hefner can back down and make a play off of. And he checks out, and Buzz Williams comes with more size now with Wilden's Levesque. Masaki will check in. Taylor will sit. Think about it again. Houston, they are averaging giving up 49 points a game. And that's exactly what Texas A&M is tracking in this ball game, if that. Three to go first half, 29-21. And Dunn will handle with Washington on him. Good look, Pryor wide open. Great job by the big guy, Jawan Roberts. Houston has handled the double team of the basketball in the low post really well. Shot contested and blocked, and now the Cougars into the front court. Done. Back out, Pryor again. And he hits with another! Hard to guard. We've already talked about him. Man, that stroke. Simple is good. Team all Big 12 choice at Baylor last year and shot it at 42% from three last season. So when you mentioned taking out that one game and the numbers jump up, I have to figure they'll continue to climb. Yeah. And, and now Baylor's got some shooters too, but they're not making the number of threes that those three guys are.
Garcia on him. And now they move the ball now back to Cryer. Shot clock winding down. Sharp got to get something off, and that's taken away. Taylor up ahead. Coleman off the glass and in. They have to. The Aggies score off of their defense. The, the half court offense, there's just not enough firepower against what they're up against today. This Houston defense is a different monster than what the Aggies have seen. In close that he couldn't hit, and now Taylor pushing up ahead. Carter. And Cougars with the rebound. They'll slow it down. 35-23. Timeout, Houston. Well, the only good thing about that for the Aggies are they went two for one. They will get the last shot of the of the first half unless we have. They completely delete your ball screen offense. You just can't run it. Unless you got a terrific ball screen screener in a short roll and a playmaker. And then they normally limit you to one. Ryan with the ball. He's got 13 first half points. They look opposite. Sharp. And that rolls home. He's a twister, but he does it consistently to the tune of about 33% on the year. Been a good crowd here first half. A large Houston contingent at Toyota Center. Basicki blocked out of bounds. 3.8 left on the game clock in the first half. Taylor will check back in. Just refusing to let the lefties go left in this game are the Houston Cougars. Now, you didn't bring him in to be a statue. If you're Houston, you better get great attention on Taylor because there's enough time for him to be the passer and then sprint to the corner and knock one down. Toss out Coleman. And that is the way the first half comes to a close. 38-23, a 10-2 run for Houston to end the first half. Houston basketball to start the second half. Doug Sermons will hand it off to Emmanuel Sharp. And Jamal Shedd leads him into the front court. Shedd. Leads him an assist, and over six a game. And a brilliant defender. Sharp hoists. And hits. That's big now for Houston. Not only this game, but going forward. You're adding another shooter to Cryer and Shed. Sharp now above 33%. Carter spins around, shot contested. And that one pulled down by Roberts. Step back. After pulls down the rebound. To the corner and Carter. Got You've got to score against the Texas uh, against the Houston, I think, out of your transition. And Xavier hurt Houston a couple of times sending a slip screen in transition, but you gotta have a guy capable of pulling it off. And prior to shit. Got him. They throw strikes. I mean, even the pass on the double team was right at the numbers. Then the second pass that led to the made field goal. 
so important move, man, to move that ball throwing strikes, not outside the strike zone. Garcia with a nice touch off the left hand, and the Aggies get two back. Still, they'll trail it by 16 here in the early going. The season ago, Houston went 33 and 4. They went 17 and 1 in conference. This year, they make the transition to Big 12. Kelvin Sampson talked about going 17 and 1. He said, Those days are over. They might be, but I'm telling you, for what I've seen right now, they're not going to have a lot of losses in that league. And Kelvin said it. We didn't join the Big 12 to collect autographs and take pictures. We're coming in to try to win another championship. And they got the DNA and the personality and the gumption to pull it off in their first year. Foul on Garcia. And Francis with a chance to complete a three-point play. I don't think there's any question that they will be right there in the mix yep. to win the conference. And it says a lot about what Houston has built, what Kelvin Sampson has built that they could come into, I think you have to say the last five years, the best conference in college basketball. Absolutely right. And and, and you come in and could they win the league? Yeah, they could win the league. I don't think there's any question about it. And th this Houston culture is not for everybody. And Kelvin and I talked a long time yesterday about when he brings a guy in out of high school to the transfer portal. They dig deep into what how kids wired and if they don't love ball and they're selfless and they're not rugged and tough They just move on and He's gotten to the point now where he can almost select as much as recruit so My point about Cryer was the guy that Cryer reached out to Houston When he went in the portal because he realized there's some areas of growth that I need to get to and I think I can accomplish it at Houston and four and white right there the offense that he brings to a rugged defense is why Houston can absolutely win the Big 12 this year. Taylor is the line. Gets the first. Taylor on him. 17 point Houston advantage. Feed inside, that one tipped away. And pass up ahead. Taylor throws a strike to Carter. And what a pass, right? right here. About 50 feet away, a one bouncer right to belt level. He is really good, but he misses his running buddy, Booth Radford. Booth Radford is a physical downhill driving dude. Prior at three. Got it. That's the gamble. When you spread your defense out over 75 feet or 90 feet, you can lose track of shooters. And Cryer so good at finding the offside of where the ball is in that press break. Feed inside, tip, and tip out of bounds. Houston's the kind of team that can make you question, do I really love playing ball or not? They can almost take that will away from you if you're not careful. Yeah, because scoring's fun, and not yeah. scoring isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. 50 32, under 16 and a half to go. Taylor. Drives to the bucket, got it rejected, gets it back, flips it up, wouldn't fall, now a loose ball. Bodies tangled up. I think Tugler might have tripped over an AM player and twisted his ankle. Coleman saves. Taylor. And an air ball. I think they got Wade Taylor for a flop afterwards, right? 16 to go. Coming up. Let's halal have them guys. cater. Let's have the halal guys uh, catered in for us. Okay. That was outstanding, by Good the enough. way. And I, I admire those guys that have been in it, and I've been around them, and they they're tough on their kids, but they have, they are great in engaging with them and developing those relationships. 
But they coach their team now without fear. They're not tied to anything other than truth. And we will get better. Who's the most intense of those four? It's got to be Danny Hurley. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's it, it's a race for second place in that conversation. But had that technical foul because of the flop called on four and maroon Wade Taylor after he took a three point shot. We pretty much have gotten the flop out of the game. Well, well done by us. Absolutely. Jet. There. You know how hard that shot is to be going full speed and explode into a soft floater at the rim. Oh, it gets into the paint and it rejected. And the jet able to save it. Washington off the glass and good. The Aggies did literally all they could on that possession just to get a shot off. I mean, they're banking one in from the elbow. Ball. Go back to that shot from Shed. Well, the guy's going 100 miles an hour downhill. And then to plant and stop with that soft floater. So you got a forceful drive Boog, with a finesse finish. That's hard, man. That's, that's high level stuff. They're making life difficult on Taylor, are they not? Just trapping the breath out of Side Coleman couldn't hit, but Carter there for the follow. Referring to him as he's a twister. Whoa. Whoa. Sharp on his three point shots. He really twists his shoulders into his shot. It's an awkward looking release. But I, I, I buy in these days for shooters to at least do it the same way every time. And Sharp does. I would try to get the twisting out of his upper body on his shot if you could going forward. But too many guys these days, Boo, they have too many shot coaches. It's like in baseball, you need a hitting coach. Yeah. In, in golf, you need a swing coach. You don't need multiple guys telling you how to shoot the ball by the time you get to this level. And a lot of guys have too many voices in the ear about. Too many coaches. Too many voices. Too many voices. You need, need to do this. Elbow in, elbow out. Jump more, jump less. What are you looking at? Front rim, back rim. Just stop. Give me one guy that knows what he's doing, and I will listen to you. Today, Scott Gustafson is that guy, our producer, with Ireland, our director. And they have been fantastic, as we anticipated. Yes, they have. I mean, really good. Our team is on. We get a foul on Houston. All right, so let's get back in the game. It's 53 to 38. AM's got the ball. They got a chance to get this thing down to 13. But where are you going? Like, where are you going with it? You got to get a good one off to at least allow a guy like Garcia or Coleman to get on the offensive glass. Buzz Williams trying to figure out the same thing. Carter can't hit. Washington does well to keep it alive. Back to Taylor. And a loose ball. And Aggies basketball. 15 point Houston advantage. Cougars unbeaten. Number four team in the country. John Chomby, Jimmy Dykes here from Toyota Center in Houston. Game two of our doubleheader as Texas got past 
LSU in game one. There's no slip threat by the Aggies in their ball screen offense, so Houston just continues to turn up the heat and really chase hard when Taylor comes off of it. Bam! Quarter three for Wade Taylor, the fourth. He's got 15, and it's down to 12. It is hard to kill the will of Buzz Williams' team. And his time at Marquette, Virginia Tech, it, it's very difficult to put them away. They have a grit and a grind about them. And we'll see if they have enough of it with 12.41 to go. Well, a reminder more college basketball coming your way tomorrow at 1 Eastern. It's USC and Auburn squaring off. Talked about too many coaches. Andy Enfield, who's the head coach at USC, used to be known as the shot doctor. Back in the day. Well, listen to his voice and his voice there, only there to the shot doctor. No doubt. Good to see Bronny James back on the floor. That Auburn team is the real deal. They're outside the top 25, but they put a hurting on Indiana last Saturday that sent a message. Ten really good players for Auburn. Not a pro, but ten really good ones. Breyer can't hit. And the Aggies with a three could get it under ten. Taylor. Oh, yeah, and it's not. Good, good action. Sprint out ball screen. Just confused the defense enough for Taylor to get to his shot spot. Man, a massive fight back by Texas A&M. Don't leave us yet. Got a lot of ball left. With 12 to go. Dreyer pushes it into the front court. That is straight man to man, keep you on the side defense by Texas AM on this possession. Trying to force you down to that short corner. No middle drives. Dunn locks it up and a good feed for Francis. And offensive interference. Get Wade Taylor back in the game. I think that's what Buzz is going to do. Had him out to save a foul on the defensive end, but rule it and count it for two. And Buzz Williams not going to like the answer that he's getting right now. Did you see anything that made you think that they should have changed the call? I did not. Yeah. I, I was surprised they came away with it. Same. Eli Lawrence. So Texas with the basketball, or I should say Houston with the basketball, leading Texas AM by 55 44 margin. Jimmy Dykes. Fryer, a little too strong. And a rebound pulled down by Roberts. Dunn. Have missed 24 shots in the game, boom. They've gotten 10 offensive rebounds. That's a good offensive rebound rate. But man, you cannot have empty possessions. A little bit of an unforced turnover by Taylor trying to take it in traffic. Chase Carter will check in for Texas AM. Eli Lawrence will sit. LJ Cryer will go to the bench for Houston. And Jamal Shett is back in for the Cougs. Shot clock under 10. Done. Step back in the three. And Sharp able to come away with it as Carter was knocked down to the floor. There's that one versus nine rebounding mentality out of Houston. They fight each other for the ball, not just the opponent. Coleman in 
side, and now we'll hold in one. Well, Buzz Williams may have found something with Coleman now as a guy that can make a play out of a short roll if they have to go to that ball screen action. And Coleman catches it at the 15 foot mark and takes it to the 10 foot mark and draws contact. He's had a really good early season. His numbers are up to 13 points and nine rebounds. Even Garcia, they they live on the glass, and that's the oxygen for Texas A&M. Is on that offensive glass, and Houston better stay in check with 10 minutes to go. Well, they can't hit. And the lead is nine. Aggies on a 14-2 run. Coach's box, box violation on Buzz Williams. Buzz Williams did a phenomenal job as the guest DJ on Kenny Chesney's Sirius XM station. He was the guest DJ for an hour and he explained why every song that he was playing was important. It was a tremendous listen. He sent it to me this week. He's a big fan of music, Buzz is. And the one team rule they have when he's in the gym, the only thing that can be played is the Commodores. When he's out of the gym, they can go at it. But when he's in the gym, only the Commodores can be played. And he was fantastic <laughs> on Kenny Chesney's radio station. I'll send it to you to listen to it later. That is so good. Doesn't need more line of exactly. life. In life. Yes. <laughs> well, he said the Commodores is to him the one music group that can bring everybody together. The the 18 year old farm kid that goes to the Aggies or the 50 something year old head coach and everything in between. <laughs> Love the choice. The walk. And it is. Am I wrong thinking AM defensively has the chops to stay in this game? Do they have enough offense? I think that's exactly what it is. Are they are they gonna score? Now certainly in the second half it's been much better. They've already scored as many points in the second half as they did in the first half. So they've at least to some degree solved some of the challenge that is Houston's defense, but over the course of the last 9 20 or so Let's see if they can come up they embrace hard under buzz williams they have always embraced when it gets hard yeah, and that's been the case wherever he's been right? absolutely this ball Houston comes away with it nine to go in this one Advantage is nine for Houston. Shed directing traffic with Fryer back in. Clock winding down. Got to get something. Fryer. And a loose ball. Sharp comes away with it. They'll set it back up. They win the foot race of the ball more than they lose it. Houston does. He did the right thing. Take what the defense gives you. Drove it with strength to the front of the rim. And now Houston's defense will dig in on their heels. We know what the handshake is. But then the first half, they just called for it again. It's for Wade Taylor. Washington rebound. Put back wouldn't go. And yeah, Washington will be at the line when we come back. 57 46 our score here. Defense out of Wade Taylor. Now, he now has 18 points. And they've also gotten on the offensive glass out of the Aggies. They have 11 offensive rebounds, which you have to get against Houston and get dirty points, body blow baskets. 
Got to get to that foul stripe. And Texas a &M, the best in the nation last year, getting there and making them. And they need to finish out this next 738 living at the free throw stripe if they can. Point game. Pulls again on seven and a half to go. As Cryer handles. Almost the steal from Taylor. Cryer over to the baseline. Lost the handle briefly. Got to get one up. Sharp. Tipped and it ends up with Garcia. Good job by the Aggies in their three-two alignment, just switching everything. Not great movement by Houston. Carter's three wouldn't go. Aggies with the rebound, huge rebound for Washington. And his bodies all over the court. Taylor went down and went down hard. been multiple collisions in this game and there's a lot of hard contact plays in basketball that you just it's, it's a play on situation and Taylor got the the tough end of the blow well he got sandwiched between yep. Tugler and Roberts and he's given up 30 some odd pounds to each of them 22 fouls called in the game if I'm if my math is right Taylor buries one, and it is down to a six-point game. I, I'm telling you, it's hard to kill the will of this Aggies team. I've seen it before over the last couple of years in SEC play. Dreyer up and under. A little bit strong. Tip won't go. Loose ball. And eventually Shed has it. No ball screen. Just let Shed go to work, right? Step back. Big rebound. Put back wouldn't go. Roberts had a shot at it. That was some defensive possession for the Aggies. I'll say it again, like I said in the first half. As the shooter starts to rise off the floor, that rebounding battle is on. If you wait till the ball's released, you're going to lose. And both these teams are early rebounding the ball. So impressive. Man, a made basket here. This building's going to come to life. Probably 50-50 in the building, right? I would say close, so they probably a little advantage. Houston. Houston. Call me going to work. And the pass intercepted as Sharp comes away with it. So a heads up play. Yeah, well-drilled team. Anytime that ball's driven baseline, you've got to fly to that offside corner. Houston just ate it up. Coops just one field goal over the last 10 minutes. Shot clock under 10. Shed rejected. Loose ball. Taylor comes away with it. Got numbers. Taylor. Oh, and the putback. It's a four-point game. The Aggies 
only two fouls, Boog, so they can they can play defense now very aggressively and not be burned at that free throw strike. Oh, it's sharp. Drills it. How big has he been today from the three-point line? I talk about how he twists that upper body, but it is seeing a big rim right now. Out of bounds, it'll stay Aggies basketball. And a fly-in ability by Texas A&M on the offensive glass by Anderson Garcia. He's got one job description. Get the ball and give it to others or get the ball and hammer it home. What's Sharp? What's his shoulder twist right there? It, he is always getting that shot side shoulder turned towards it more, more than you would teach it, but it works for him. Texas 3.58 to go in this one. Houston leads it by seven. Got a good one here at Toyota. Losses. He has scored nine points in each of those games. So I mean, they need him to be that SEC player of the year type guy. He's got 21 in this one. Let's see if shot clock winding down. How about shit? Wow. I mean, he cleanly blocked a jump shot right there. Uh, just, it, there's not a better on-ball defender in college ball than Jamal Shedd. And the timing and the explosiveness to go up top and get it. Not a good offensive possession by Texas A&M coming out of the timeout. Yeah, you got to have awareness yeah. on that clock. Kevin wants to see more movement out of his offense. I don't blame him. They've guarded himself a little bit this half. And they got a clear out of it for Carter pushing Tugler. Just a third team foul, though. Coleman gets into the paint, wanders out. Sharp to Cryer. Catch, shoot. And the rebound pulled down by Coleman. Aggies down by seven, close in on three to go. Taylor splits the defense. Up and under. Wow. Count it. Who gets all set up by a quick, fast drag screen up top for Taylor. And right there, Coleman sets it. And then the slip in between by Foreign Maroon gets all the way to the rim. His growth as a finisher at the rim over the last couple of years has really gone to the next level. But you've got to punch Houston three or four times each half with your transition conversion offense. And the Aggies do, and it's a four-point game. 16 of his 24 in the second half. Four-point game, and here we go. Here comes the crowd in Houston. Still only three teams fouls on Texas A&M. They got fouls to give and to play with. Do not give up an easy one at the rim. Shot clock winding down. Shed step back. Wow. Oh, <laughs> he just looked at Solomon Washington and was like, sorry. Shed with the hands, and he knocked it out of bounds. The guts that Shed plays with on both ends is impressive. The low dribble, step back, dance with the ball, bam, right in the grill. But that Texas A&M defender, Solomon Washington, who's all up 6-7, and then completely disrupts the drive of Wade Taylor on the defensive end. Confrontational is the best word I have for Houston's defense. You with me? I am. I would agree. <laughs> it's like you and I courtside for all 40 yes. minutes. <laughs> Just one giant confrontation. <laughs> defense, 
Well, that's good on good right there. One on four. Oh, they get the foul. And that'll be on Shed, his third. <laughs> Folks, Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. It's a must have for Big 12 basketball fans. And tonight's featured matchup, Cincinnati squares off against Dayton at 7 Eastern. Texas Tech hosts Vanderbilt. That'll be in Fort Worth at 7.30 Eastern. If you're a Big 12 fan, you got to have it. Sign up today. ESPNplus.com slash Big 12 now. And these two teams know how to grind, man. They, they know how to work. I'm talking to LJ Crowder yesterday. Brought back to my attention. If, if you hang around five guys that work, you become the sixth. If you can't hang around five guys that are lazy, you become the sixth. Then... Well, these programs stand for all the right things. <laughs> Out of bounds. And it'll be Texas A&M basketball. 63-57, 218 to go. <laughs> Buzz Williams sub an offense for defense right now. Hefter comes in as a shot threat. Now you do lose an offensive rebounder with Washington sitting down. You still got Garcia and Coleman though on that offensive glass. Taylor. Bam! Oh! <laughs> wow. What a second half performance against the best defensive team in the country by Wade Taylor. Uncertainty out of Houston's offense the last four or five minutes. Late clock possessions have not been, been in their favor. Shed feed inside. Travel. No basket. Wade Taylor, man. His cut to the basketball right there with a purpose. And just a little bit tardy. Just an easy handoff into a pull three by Wade Taylor. It's a one possession game where a 21 point lead is down to three. Big time game. Neither team would give in. Taylor at game high 28. Being harassed, Garcia comes up to the Taylor. We are tied. the foul situation in your favor. And where do you expect Houston to go here? Well, you can't go wrong with Jamal Shedd and L.J. Cryer. You've got a clock issue. Now, this thing is going to be this possession and maybe the next one will be decided on the glass and it will be an all-out war. The officials have let him play when the ball's above the rim, fight for rebounds. And watch the action when the shot's taken. Oh, wow. great look by Shed finding Francis. Such a high percentage look, and it happened so quick, the Aggies couldn't even get there to foul in time to take it away. Taylor with Shed on him. Loose ball, and Shed comes away with under a minute to go. Cougars by two. Crucial defensive possession for the Aggies. Buzz Williams has his hands up defending along with him. Sharp will try. Wow! Sharp has been that. A game-changing shooting performance by Emmanuel Sharp. They get 45% of their misses on the year, the Aggies do. One of the best in college basketball. You've got to get off a good look right here and allow your athletes to climb on the glass, if nothing else. Taylor puts it up. Puts oh, it in. Yeah. Wow. 
I'm not sure he didn't also get fouled. I think you're right. I mean, but he's just getting the ball and saying, I am shooting. A big time game on a big time Saturday in college basketball. As impactful of a Saturday that we've had all season long at the college level. Dyer. Get the bump as sharp is foul. Sharp. 80% free throw shooter this year. And in his brief career, remember just a sophomore, but in his brief career, an 84% free throw shooter. This is oh, where just that, five. Oh, yeah, your pardon, yeah, yeah, that's where that foul to give that's comes right. into play. You've got another one to gamble and be very aggressive and try to get a rip and a steal here if you're Texas A&M. He moved, right? Is that what it was? Yeah. You, wow. cannot, yeah. you cannot come out of that three foot imaginary box. And Doug Sermon's on the far side of the court, is the official that makes the call, and he steps right out of it, clearly comes out of that three foot box. Yeah. That's an easy call to make and a huge turnover by Dunn. Doug Sermon's is looking right at it, right in front of us. Yeah. You can move within that imaginary three-foot box, Luke, but you can't go outside of it. The Aggies are out of timeouts. Jimmy, I'm thinking they might try and get it to Taylor. Elevator screen is just getting the ball, and then you got good on good, the best on-ball defender against a great offensive player. Here we go. Off the mark. Inside Coleman wouldn't go and a foul the value to get the shot off So important when your oxygen is the offensive glass and Wade Taylor. I have no problem with the look He's seen a really big rim But he shoots such a good ball boo. That's a That's a good offensive rebound ball to go get And the Aggies kept it alive by Carter Here we go Coleman 70% his career You wanted to miss this on purpose? Buzz doesn't have timeouts to think about it or work with it. You know, you're such a good offensive rebounding team, and I think that's what Buzz is probably going to do with Williams, Lebeck, and Garcia. And there, there will not be a whistle call on this play. It's been grown man basketball all day with it on the glass. Buzz is just yelling, make it. And he missed it. And then the foul. Well, he had the alignment. He had the right lineup in to miss it if he wanted to, but I think you try to make it with that much time left. Either way, the, the miss, and the all important rebound by Houston. I mean, Taylor got a look, and Jimmy, as you mentioned time and time again, for AM, such a good offensive rebounding team, and they got it. Multiple opportunities yes. and put backs and eventually two free throw attempts out of it yeah, He's frozen again on that baseline. He cannot move Jamal shed You try to get a steal right here for Texas A&M and then the foul automatically has to come after the catch you gotta get him and They get it to sharp 5.1 to go Foul on Chase Carter The only thing you look at Texas A&M, I mean Houston, is they're 63% free throw shooting team. That number's got to go up as the year goes on. But this kid, 80% on the year, Emmanuel Sharp. You want tough dudes on the line to close out games? I think Sharp's a tough dude. Sharp at 19, coming off a career-high 25 his last game so kind of a breakout spot for him gets the first Kelvin has a timeout to use buzz does not Gamble and, and take for granted 
You're up four with he's going to try to squeeze off a three and hope that he gets fouled. Closer than it should have been. <laughs> right? Yeah. I don't even understand why you're contesting. No. <laughs> Kelvin Sampson and Houston, the Cougars escape and improve to 11 and oh, what a performance by Wade.